бүгдээрээ Angle uh, Olsen, Devon, Then You Are Be, Devon Hotod, Nutrigold болон Nutrilink компани одоо үйл ажиллагаа офис дээрээс нь одоо мэндчилж байна. Тэгээ өнөөдөр <coughs> Nutrigold болон Nutrilink uh, одоо витаминыг үүсгэн байгуулсан Antonita хэдүүлээ өнөөдөр ярилцах болно. Um, so I was just saying hello to the customer in Mongolia, Nutrigold uh, Mongolia. Nutrigold's been distributed to Mongolia officially for almost five years yes. now. Yes. So um, you are the founder of Nutrilink. Yeah, co-founder. <coughs> co-founder yes, of indeed. Nutrilink yes. and Nutrigold. And thank you so much for your creation and bringing this to Mongolia and making it happen. And well, thank you. And it wouldn't be getting out to Mongolia if it was not for you. So it's, it's a pleasure to, to know that what, what goes on in this this southwest of England. I can, know. Can reach the east. I know. It's yes. been like COVID happened and we're really, really happy to be here and bring the Mongolian customer the information they desire yes. and most of all introduce you to the customers as well. Yeah, so thank you. You can say hello and you can introduce well, yourself. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Anthony Haynes. I'm a registered nutritional therapist. I have been practicing and seeing clients since 1992. However, the interest in nutrition for me began at least in 1980 when I was just 15 and I was playing lots of sport and one of my friends was playing the strange sport called cricket and he was playing for England. So he's very, very good and, and I was playing county sports at five different sports and we used to play together in half term and holidays. And I said in 1980, I said to my friend John, I said, I wonder what food we need to eat for peak performance in 1980. Very good this question. Was, this was a radical question at the time. Um, I think we came to the solution uh, pretty quickly, too quickly, that a, mm -hmm. that a baked potato in a microwave might just do it. So of course I, uh, there's a lot of mistakes we made too. Mm -hmm. But um, so that's, that's when it began and at that time there were no such thing as nutritionists. Nutritionists didn't exist in 1980. So I, I, I did a sports degree and I graduated in 1987. I started then a career in the army and I left the army to become a nutritionist in 1988. And at that time, there were very few colleges. Mm -hmm. um, but I started studying formally in 1990. I graduated in 1992. I started teaching in 1991 wow. um, and um, implementing the, mm -hmm. the principles of functional medicine, which is really naturopathy, but with the scientific research behind the naturopathy in that sense in about 1994. And that's when Mike and Ash, who's the co-founder, we traveled to America to mm -hmm. listen to the, the annual conferences of the Institute for Functional Medicine. And so we began a company for, as a partnership originally mm -hmm. to teach other nutritionists. So I was teaching every weekend undergraduates mm -hmm. of nutrition. Wow. And so we started Nutrilink as a partnership, not a limited company, mm -hmm. um, to promote education. <coughs> it was only then later that we actually stumbled into the field of distributing supplements. Wow. So education first. So till this day, I believe um, you, you know, um, part of your job and part of uh, Nutri Link and Nutri Gold's main aim is education. Can you tell me yes. a bit on, about that? Yes, certainly. We certainly knowing that, um, well, we basically respect individuals to f recognize they need to know what they're doing mm -hmm. to be able to uh, stimulate inner motivation to do the right thing for themselves. So it's not, uh, take this, trust me, take this, this is good yeah, for you. Yeah. It's, um, it's actually, what's the, the mantra at mm -hmm. the college, and the mantra is, what's the underlying mechanism? What's the underlying mechanism? What's the, so the questions we get, what's the underlying, what's the reason for this? Mm -hmm. So it's really understand the rock bed of nutritional biochemistry. Mm -hmm. So we have been teaching undergraduates and postgraduates mm -hmm. um, for 25 years, mostly postgraduates now. Mm -hmm. So it's really just about understanding how the body works. And, and also appreciate, I think, that if you give the body with what it needs, it will do with it what it will do with, as opposed to having the arrogance to think that you can actually change someone's biochemistry, let's say with a medication, which all have side effects. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of nutritional therapy is what's called the pleiotropic effect, mm -hmm. which is a multifactorial effect. And, and you may know that magnesium, for example, is necessary for over 300 enzymes, but it's actually necessary for making over 3,000 proteins. 
which is which is some, often not not heard. Zinc is required for hundreds of enzymes. B6. So if you provide these nutrients, the body will do with what it will do with mm -hmm. them. Now, for many years before I about before 1992, I believed that food could give you everything you need mm -hmm. from food. Okay. And so I I it took me a long while. I was very resistant to it, even when I. But study after study after study showing that population groups mm -hmm. were deficient in this vitamin, deficient in that mineral, deficient. In fact, if you did a survey of an array of nutrients, every single population group is deficient in many nutrients, mm -hmm. no matter what they ate, no matter how well to do they were or if they were well off. And so it, it did, I then came to accept, and it's something that I fully appreciate, that mm -hmm. it's almost impossible, dare I say impossible, to get optimal nutrition from food alone. Mm -hmm. Now in evolution, as, as man evolved, we had survival nutrition. Okay. And only with modern science do we know what it takes to optimize function. And that's mm -hmm. a massive difference. Mm -hmm. And so people sort of put up with, with symptoms and signs um, and, they, and everyone I met, everyone growing up, everyone, everyone I met was deficient in a vitamin or mineral or more. Mm -hmm. um, but with modern science now, we can identify what an optimal level is and you can only achieve that if you augment uh, a very good diet with the appropriate targeted supplements. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really the truth of it as far as I can see and all the experts agree. No mm -hmm. study assessing a nutrient status will identify that, that the people in the study have sufficient from levels food. from food alone. And it's throughout the years, obviously like a food it has to be our first aim to get most of, of our nutrition. Yes. We have to aim for it every day. But uh, before all these testing and science came mm. about, we were pretty, what did you uh, say? It? Survival yeah, kind survival of nutrition, nutrition. base, yes. yes. And also probably since the there's a good study on the after Second World War, the soil uh, mineral content and uh, you know yes. uh, has depleted as well so and, and all other studies looking at soil depletion mm -hmm. uh, have shown it's a, a dramatic decline mm -hmm. and helps explain why people are having a low levels of, of nutrients for sure mm -hmm. so yes it's well of course the word supplement is supplementary which is a, additional to the food you, you, mm -hmm. you're not we're not living as like astronauts on, on astronaut supplements but it's food first mm -hmm. you get the bulk of your nutrients from that from that for sure mm -hmm. but initially and I, I was talking about my grandfather with you earlier if, yes. if he if he had a, a plate of a meat and two vegetables, which is this, the way you explain a sort of a, a typical meal in England, mm -hmm. meat and two veg. Mm -hmm. If we took the same food, uh, so let's say he had a, a turkey or chicken or lamb, lamb and vegetables, and we had the same food today, you'd mm -hmm. have the same weight, uh -huh. you'd have less nutrients today by some way compared to the food that he ate when he was in the 1920s in this area. Yeah. So. Um, food contains less and less, mm. uh, unfortunately, and so and, and unfortunately the world has also become a lot more full of toxins and there may be 200,000 man-made substances mm. and looking at the list the other day there are 6,000 definite poisons, wow. 6,000, and of those there are maybe 24 to 30 that are very bad and this is what companies can now test for because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a minefield. So by having the right nutrients you optimize your cellular function, your enzyme function, for mm -hmm. all aspects of health. So one nutrient has many different benefits. That's mm -hmm. the beauty. Mm -hmm. it, most nutrients don't have any drug-like effects at all, mm -hmm. but Side they effect. optimize function. Mm -hmm. And if you optimize function, that includes detoxification. Mm -hmm. if that in, and yes. so detoxification, I mean, basically is detox or die. Mm -hmm. And detox is not just for the one week of the year, it's every day. Detox so, or die. Detox or die. So detoxification is an integral part of optimal cell functioning every day. So you're looking to optimize nourishment at the mm -hmm. same time you're looking to optimize detoxification. Because mm -hmm. if you have nourishment without detoxification, mm -hmm. it's not harmonious. So we need a balance. I have so many questions about detoxification and people always want to do just the seven day detox mm. or like we have loads of customers approach us like and there's loads of huge business on it but from what you're saying it's every day, every day. optimizing your cell yes. so it can function itself and everything every yes. day it has ability detox is a way of life yeah and we just have to support our each and every cell in our body uh, organs for us to do that yes. so let's back uh, going back mm. to 1992 you mm. said for you it was very difficult to come to the fact that you can't get yes. get all your nutrients from the simply the food that we're eating. So I think because I was a degree holder in in a sports science, which didn't teach me much about nutrition at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think I was sort of the, the the arrogance of youth. 
I think, oh, and so I was resistant to it, even though all mm -hmm. the research studies from independent studies showed the same thing. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I, I finally came to it, mm -hmm. essentially. And actually, I found that uh, remarkably, I had a, I was suffering migraines from time to time, mm -hmm. uh, like my mother, so I sort of inherited, mm -hmm. and it was a, a splitting headache. It was awful. Mm. And I discovered. And you were young, very that, young. Yes, and a nutritional supplement cured my migraines, essentially. Mm -hmm. Which was? Well, it was, it was actually the B12 supplement. <laughs> Um, because I was vitamin B12. Yeah, I was low in B12, and actually B12 with folate helped better. Mm -hmm. But the um, but the B12 and the folic acid, uh, the folate helped me. So that helped me to see that, uh, and I was eating uh, what I thought was very well. Now, of course, I can look back and I made mistakes, mm -hmm. but certainly, so it was a supplement that helped me, and um, and the headache pills, did, the painkillers didn't work. So for me, it was a real breakthrough. Mm. Uh, so I got to see that. That's amazing to be able to see it in your body, in yourself. Yes. The way it um, translated to me in my life and how I got into nutrition, how I became a nutritionist and how I followed IFM was, mm. um, before I even went into studying nutrition, my mom um, had come to help me to mind my firstborn and she was popping the pill and she was taking a painkiller for her arthritis. Mm. So I just googled the drug she was taking mm -hmm. uh, uh anti um what's it it's like a neuro no it's like a neurofin, neurofin. Uh, the, uh, um, what's it called um ibuprofen ibuprofen so non i googled it anti-inflammatory drug non-steroidal yes. so yeah. when i googled it the side effects were crazy mm -hmm. like and she was having a gut issue she was having a stomach issue and uh, the side effects were crazy so i brought her to uh, emergency room diagnosed her with arthritis that's 12 years ago and i had this book of patrick holford mm. Food is better medicine than drug, and it had this whole chapter on anti uh, painkiller. Yes. So I followed, we followed, I translated the whole chapter for her to Mongolian so she could understand that painkiller could be mm. affecting worse. You know, Absolutely. obviously, it's not easy to be in pain every day when you're walking, but I, I wanted her to understand let's try this, let's try mm. food. Yep. And let's try supplements. Yes. So like loads of omega-3s and loads of vitamin Ds. And it took me three years to increase her vitamin D level. So I cooked her anti-inflammatory yeah. food yep. and then gave her so much like curcumin, omega-3, all the pull the protocol. Within a month, mm. my mom's pain, every step she would take, she would have a pain and that stopped. You, and you didn't just save her knee, you saved her life, I think. <laughs> because, you, because the painkillers, uh, yes, I know Patrick Holford, he was the founder of the, of the Institute for Optimal Nutrition where both myself and Michael Ash studied. So I knew. <laughs> that Patrick Holford introduced Michael and me to, me to meet. Uh -huh. And he's still a friend, Patrick. So, wow. Uh, and I've been to his, yes, he's, he is yeah, about 65 now. Um, mm. So he was an ice I know him breaker well. for the England for nutrition, yes, was yes, he? Yes, yes, he was. So I he, kind yeah, of so he, so, yeah, so he, he remains a friend and I do see him Amazing. from time to time. The um, issue, if I identify something there, is that the, the painkillers, of course, have reduced the pain, but they actually, the, the painkillers stop connective tissue from healing. So not, not only do they cause a leaky gut mm. and damage the gut lining, um, but they also decrease glutathione. Oh. Um, and so you need glutathione support, so selenium mm. and, and, and other antioxidants are required. So it depletes mm. your antioxidants and it stops your connective tissue from healing. So you, your mum your mom has a lot to thank you for if she <laughs> were to appreciate it. Since then, she's been every day, she's yes. been taking her supplements. Yeah. And yeah. I've kind of narrow, you know, stepped back on food a little bit because mm. I wanted to be her daughter rather than her nurse, yes. you know, because yes. it can be. Boundaries. But after Boundaries almost 20 years. Yeah. Yes. So, um, mm. so that's our story how we started uh, with food for me anyway and that I just knew firsthand how we just needed this you know firsthand how effective supplement was yes. and uh, on the first in Ireland first functional medicine conference I mm. met Jeremy who yes. is the operations manager of Nutrigold so that's how Nutrigold came to Mongolia so I'm Fantastic. really really grateful yeah. and happy to be able to bring it to Mongolia mm. and to Mongolian customers so going back to your um, Mm, days that you started uh, using supplements so it started with the migraine b12 and folic acid so mm -hmm. how did the supplement had evolved since then did we have methyl folate uh, no there was no methyl folate available at all which is the active form of folate which can be which more suitable now. for many people compared to the, the again folic acid may not be appropriate so mm -hmm. the, the active form now, things have changed a lot i mean on the supplements on the shelves were, were there 
1992, um, but but so less. And the, I think I think there's been a lot of appreciation of the form of the nutrient, like methyl folate, for example, compared to folic acid, and methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin compared to um, cyanocobalamin for the B12, for example. Mm -hmm. And you've got certain forms, active forms of B6. So you've got the forms, and then you've got the the forms in supplements that are best absorbed. And then you've got the awareness of excipients and binders that may inhibit the absorption, so you exclude those. You exclude things to which people can have reactions. We don't put any, like, um, talcum powder, talc. Some mm -hmm. companies still put talc, which you may have heard of. And uh, talc is the same family member as asbestos, Wow. for example. So it's, it's avoiding the, the, the th factors that are negative for health in some way, but also avoid the, the, the cofactors that may interfere with absorption mm -hmm. as well. But you need to have some, some flow agents and some excipients to put into capsules. Mm -hmm. But they need to be as benign or possibly as helpful as, as possible. So it's a combination of identifying the, the nutrients that people need, um, the mix of nutrients that are more likely. So I'll give you, I'll stand back a second. 50 essential nutrients is the rough number for human beings. Every human being is about 50 nutrients. Depends on okay. which, which, if you believe that... That, or is it 49 or is it 51? Depending on, on yeah. the study, saying, well, is this essential, is it not essential? Mm -hmm. So 50 essential nutrients for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that will be the same in Mongolia as mm -hmm. it is for England, even though you could, so. be, you could be dark and I'd be fair. So it's, it's the same. Mm -hmm. And in, in, there are certain nutrients mm -hmm. which are much less likely to be lacking. Mm -hmm. And there are certain nutrients which are much more likely to be lacking. Yeah. And then you have a group of uh, supplements that say, well, we need these because of modern living mm -hmm. and the increased toxicity, toxicity in the world. Yeah. So modern living um, um, in EMFs and, and toxicity. So we need to protect ourselves. So it's, you've got a different, if you, I think I've, yeah. So we've got the nutrients you won't really be deficient in, mm -hmm. nutrients you'll like to be lacking in, mm -hmm. and nutrients you need more of because of lifestyle and environment. Mm -hmm. And so on that basis, um, very good reason for everybody needs something, but not everybody needs the same thing. So, which is why not everybody, for example, might need a, a broad multivitamin and mineral necessarily, mm -hmm. because you've already got the multi here. But, but I reckon, and one of my favourite supplements is the OxyCell antioxidant. Okay. Because we need more antioxidants to mm -hmm. protect ourselves from um, EMFs, toxins, stress, staying up too late. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And there's so many things mm -hmm. that deplete our antioxidant status. And antioxidants protect cell membrane, hence oxy cell. So it protects the cell. So that's mm -hmm. probably my, my favorite, my favorite supplement mm -hmm. in the NutriGold range, the oxy cell. So it's providing antioxidants. It's something that um, we, um, I would say that is a huge need mm -hmm. across the world, essentially, because mm -hmm. we're not getting it from food. Uh, we don't have oxy cells to Mongolia um, yeah. at the moment mm. yet, but we do have a quercetin. Yes, now quercetin and is a fantastic anti-inflammatory. I've used that for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And quercetin has got wonderful research on it showing it's, it's re reducing histamine and other inflammatory cytokines such as interleukins. So it's an anti-inflammatory. It's also been proposed to be a chemo-preventative agent, a wow. cancer-preventative agent as well. And since COVID and long COVID have come to this world. Mm -hmm. uh, quercetin is one of the prime supplements to consider for reducing histamine, which is increased with something called mast cell activation syndrome, MCAS, which, was which is like a Venn diagram overlap mm -hmm. with long COVID. Mm -hmm. So quercetin is a is also, I mean, very good for cardiovascular health, very good anti, very good anti-inflammatory antioxidant. And how different is Nutrigol quercetin from the average? Yeah. Shop or yeah, that, it is a good question, and, and it mm -hmm. would that would require perhaps you know a comparison because there are some fantastic products out there. Mm -hmm. But equally, it's it's having it bioavailable, mm -hmm. and so a lot of conversations with nutritional supplement companies and and customers is is well, I've got the same amount on the label, yes, but how much am I going to get if I do a blood test? You know, two hours later, which one? How much am I going to have from this product and that product? So bioavailability is key. I mm -hmm. think. Really. And Nutrigol uh, quercetin is obviously yes, incredible. It's highly bioavailable. And, and so you can tell from, forgive me, no. you, can, you, can, you can tell from um, the speed at which clients can respond to it. So mm -hmm. quercetin is one of the supplements mm -hmm. that you can, you can observe the difference in time. So you could take it and you have a, you have a symptomatic relief. So quercetin okay. can be used for hay fever and allergies. 
uh, an inflammation. So if someone has hay fever and you take an appropriate dose of quercetin, you can reduce the hay fever symptoms in a matter of hours. So what would be appropriate dose? So uh, the huge problem, um, mm. as we are recording this here in England in the beautiful countryside, incredible weather. I know it's raining, but in mm. Mongolia, uh, especially in the capital city of Lambatar, it's the huge um, po uh, pollution. Yes. Air pollution is off the roof. I can't even, I won't even bore mm. you with the number. It's um, it's catastrophic level. So in that scenario, I would, uh, you know, uh, would you uh, recommend quercetin to protect the cell? Quercetin, yes. And, and also to re reduce the immune response to the toxins, mm -hmm. which can sometimes produce more negative factors than the toxin itself. So the immune response mm -hmm. to it is actually what produces the symptoms and the coughing and the, those symptoms. So it can reduce the infl inflammatory response and the cascade of inflammation. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you're waking up that, we, we actually have a pollution meter at home. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're aware of the figures. Um, and I would say that certainly if I, if, <laughs> if I was there, I'd probably be considering taking one with each meal. One with each meal, mm. uh, Christine. How about children? Um, uh, it, typically, the, the most nutritional supplements, a lot of questions we get asked about, yes. about children and possibly even babies. And generally speaking, it's on size. Mm -hmm. I mean, there really is, there, it's really, look, if you've got a, it's sometimes the kids, of course, at such an age, I mean, it's, that's half, so it'd be half the dose. Yes, yes. So half the dose. Half so, a dose. And uh, the course, eating is, is super, super safe in that sense, yes. is that it wouldn't be an error. But I would say that, depending on the ease of, of, I would say, if you've got someone, a child half your size, so the half adult size, so not, the, forget the age, it's size, then I would say then half that dose. Now, it may not be possible always to pull apart the capsule and put half in here, but let's say it could be, it could be one one day and two the next day. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, you're getting three um, in, in, you know, three in two days. But essentially, if the, if the child has more symptoms, it may be worth considering a higher dose for a short time to see if that reduced the symptoms. Mm -hmm. We had an incredible result uh, with quercetin mm. and vitamin D and zinc and uh, curcumin yes. Yes. Uh, as a hay fever um, yeah. prevention because we um, started producing um, information from, from probably about now, from spring onwards mm. because um, there are loads of uh, parents who are, you know, contacting us because they can't take their kids to countryside because yeah. of the hay fever. They'll be just suffering all throughout the summer. So we started, you know, um, giving them information about preventative Fantastic. measure. And they reported when they start using from spring onwards, like loads of moms have called us back and said Makes they were able so to bring sense. their kids oh, to the countryside. He didn't have that much, in the, you know, here, sneeze here and there, mm. but it wasn't as bad as before. I think hay fever is underrated. It's underrated as a negative thing because it mm -hmm. affects you, of course, right here. So mm -hmm. it affects your life completely. If studies show that the greater the city pollution, so mm -hmm. that the, in uh -huh. the city, the more likely you are to have a reaction to pollen. And there can be wow. also cross-reactivity with pollutants and, and, and pollens as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, it's definitely a phenomenon. The increased toxicity in air pollution definitely mm -hmm. increases your likelihood of having less tolerance to True. pollens and, and tree and tree birch and birches and grasses as well. But um, any so, other recommendations? Well, I was going to say vitamin C helps mm -hmm. to break down histamine in the body, mm -hmm. so it supports the immune response. Zinc is vital for again, anti-inflammatory again, yeah. again very. So it, it will have a, a broader, actually even an even broader impact on inflammation compared to quercetin. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. So you could actually scale it up. You could say, well, if quercetin alone doesn't work, you could say, well, I'll take quercetin and, and vitamin C. Mm -hmm. By the way, zinc is often very low in the diet. Mm. So zinc is one of those nutrients which actually is going to be on, as I said, this, you're going to have enough of those nutrients, but zinc is likely to be mm -hmm. low. Um, and it's also yeah, vital for so many different enzyme pathways, but mm -hmm. crucial for white blood cells, crucial for the immune system. Mm -hmm. And vitamin C is good for the immune system. And then, yeah, turmeric, of course, more, more studies on turmeric than any other natural substance. I understand. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. If you can tell us a little bit more about um, uh, turmeric and yes. also specifically nutrigold turmeric and the case as you had, mm. You know, yeah, so that's what's helpful with turmeric is well documented, particularly in India, perhaps less so mm. than Mongolia, but um, mm. India is a common spice. And what's interesting is it's very poorly absorbed. Mm -hmm. And so you, as a food, as, as a food, you might absorb 10 percent. So there's mm. an association with turmeric intake in India with reduced colonic issues like colon cancer because it gets into the colon because it's not absorbed. So it has a benefit in the colon if it's from the food spice, but the but in order to get in the body and have an anti-inflammatory effect systemically, um, you want to have it as a well-absorbed form. Mm -hmm. So there have been different 
generations of absorbable turmeric and the Nutri-Gold one mm -hmm. is actually the third generation um, efficacy essentially okay. so it, it, it really is up there in terms of the amount you ingest and in, in your bloodstream it lasts for longer so it's well documented in in the studies looking at blood so it's quite cumbersome to do these studies because it requires money and funding and and, and actually mm. assessing what's in the bloodstream afterwards but it's it's extremely well absorbed and it lasts in in the in the bloodstream so imagine you had a let's say we take 200 milligrams or 500 milligrams and you've got 500 milligrams of a turmeric which is not so well absorbed it hasn't had the, the technology applied to it you might you might it might have a benefit for 30 minutes and reach a certain level whereas the nutri gold one may have a benefit that's 100 for four hours wow so it's eight times longer for the, in your body for the same actual amount looking but mm -hmm. it's, it's so so it, the devil that no it's not the devil but the devil is in the detail, detail as an expression yes and so it's in the detail so it looks pretty similar they look pretty similar but they're not yes and so that's again bioavailability mm -hmm. so it's bioavailability and then it's sustainability within the, the bloodstream so eight times more effective I mean, that, then that will have an effect. So and you who could would take, you recommend curcumin? Yes, anyone, anyone with inflammation. So anyone with any soreness or aches and pains. So usually there might be an older, older population group, so with sore pains and joints. So anyone with arthritis of any kind. Uh, anyone with inflammation of any kind. So most autoimmune conditions, and there are ever-increasing numbers of those, I think there are 87 plus, it's got to do with inflammation. So any autoimmune condition, the thyroid autoimmune thyroiditis, so Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. that's the most common one. You have celiac, you've got psoriasis, you've got rheumatoid arthritis, you've got MS, you've got psoriasis, all autoimmune conditions, mm -hmm. too much inflammation. Mm -hmm. So curcumin, curcumin extract turmeric will be useful for those individuals, essentially. And can they take it continuously or do they take one pass, take question. a pass? Yeah. Or? You know, I think, I think it's always worthwhile. I sort of have a, although I'm a huge fan of the benefits of, of supplements, I'm always aiming at, well, I wonder if you don't need it anymore. I wonder if you don't need it anymore. So if I have clients and I say, take it every day and take it for, for one month, two months, three months, they say, yes, sir, yes, sir, and then they improve and they might be taking a number of supplements, so which one's working, which one's not. But the motivation for them taking it is coming from me, not from them. They trust me and they take it. I really want to give the power of the, uh, of the choice, the inner motivation, to my client. Yes. So about what I often do is say, if they have a result, great, you've got a result. Your knee's hurting less or your skin's less irritated, or your headaches are less. Some benefit has occurred. So I tell you what, let's see how, how little you need of that. And then the client then says, well, I didn't take it for a day. I took it every other day. And the pain or that my skin got worse and my headache came back. So go back to a higher dose. So I help the client. So we're more like partners mm -hmm. rather than practitioner or patient. So it's a partnership. So then, yes. the, then the client goes, I know I need that one. Mm -hmm. And so they take it of their own volition yes. and they don't feel like they're being sold something by the practitioner, which I would never want to do. Of course, yeah. So uh, it's looking to instill intrinsic understanding and intrinsic motivation. And mm -hmm. certainly I can explain why that might be. And it might be that certain days, let's say that um, come Friday, work really hard Monday to Friday. And Friday, I always get more, you know, I always get more tired on Friday. I get worse knee pain or I get a headache on Friday. Um, maybe they could take a higher dose that day mm -hmm. and lesser dose ac according to their lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. For example, or if they, if they drink alcohol, for example, if that happens, um, <laughs> it might be on a Friday and Saturday. Yeah. And they feel worse on a Sunday. I said, look, take more turmeric on the Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday, mm -hmm. accordingly. So to help people understand the benefit. It, I mean, really, you're not going to get the, the Nutrigold turmeric is not going to be found in food or spice. It'll have, it has a far greater effect. So you can't, it, no amount of added turmeric as a spice will achieve the same thing as the supplement. And we have a trademark specific third yes. generation now. Yes. And uh, Nutrigold, uh, going back to another question on mm. uh, Nutrigold uh, turmeric um, and its effect on liver, would you, yes. in that cases of liver disease? Yes. Yeah, yeah, liver issues, in fact, from fatty liver, liver disease, and fatty liver is this, this continuum. So you've got very fatty liver, which could lead to serious factors like liver sclerosis, and then that could lead to liver cancer. And then and you've got- And viruses then you, as well, the oh, okay. hepatitis. Yes, we'll come on to that too. Oh, well, certainly hepatitis can actually contribute mm -hmm. to, to a, an impaired liver function too, mm -hmm. and contribute to fatty liver too. But fatty liver can be, you can start here with like little fatty streaks, which the ultrasound might show, or to, to this level here. So it's a real continuum, mm -hmm. fatty liver itself. But fatty mm -hmm. liver is, it's extremely common. Mm -hmm. And usually you can tell if someone has a fatty liver from the size of their belly. 
So you can almost see if someone, okay. someone come, walks in the room, you can say, well, I think you've got a fatty liver. What is remarkable in my research on the subject, it is remarkable, is that not every single obese individual, and I mean that's a BMI of 30 plus, mm -hmm. or 35, 40, has a fatty liver. So there, there's clearly some genetic quirks in some people that, that not, not every very overweight person will have a fatty liver. But notwithstanding that, I would say I would much rather have safety, mm -hmm. say assume that anyone who's overweight is likely to have a development of fatty liver and the anti-inflammatory turmeric can help to inhibit that inflammation in the liver so it gets absorbed into the portal blood flow into the liver so it'll be processed in the liver and that will have a benefit in the liver first mm -hmm. often which actually may be most needed because the liver is the busiest organ i think 500 functions a day yeah. and i'm learning about a few of them after 33 years <laughs> so it's a so turmeric is su super useful for helping um reduce inflammation a little bit inflammation caused by any kind whether it's again hepatitis b mm -hmm. or, or other viruses as well but again reducing inflammation it's the immune response mm -hmm. to substances toxins and viruses and bugs which cannot often be the more the most negative thing so for example with, with covid it was the immune response that actually generated the worst symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, you are quite a leading expert and um, educator on this field because I've been to your fatty liver oh, yes. <laughs> uh, nice. a course as well. So um, I really appreciate your input mm. on this. Um, with the pollution and the uh, air pollution in Ulaanbaatar and mm. like we have about over a million people, like pretty much half of the population is living there and our population is quite young. So oh. more than half of it is young people and imagine the kids as well. So yeah. um, just going back, you mentioned mm. uh, vitamin C. Yes. So Nutrigold have um, three different types of vitamin C. Yeah. So the latest one is the leukid form liposome. Yes. And the, we have the powdered one. With we also have, And also mix ascorbate, which is the yes. softer one. So if you can, uh, uh, yeah. I think people will know um, um, bit more on the other ascorbic acid and the um, vitamin C's. If you can... Um, mm. I'll do my best. So, um, so the liposomal form... The liposomal again, form. So, I mentioned new. third generation, I'm not sure that it's termed as such, but liposomal, effectively liposomes are basically a, a sort of absorbed very well, carrying the vitamin C to the parts that might not, not otherwise receive it. But also, it basically, it lasts for longer and, and is absorbed into the the, the, fat, the fatty cell membranes as well. So um, the more pollution there is, the more vitamin C you need. Vitamin C is a protective agent. And the liposomal C effectively helps to reach the, the, the fatty tissues in the cell membranes mm -hmm. uh, more than just in the serum, which, the, which a more standard vitamin C or mix, mixed ascorbates would, would lead to. So effectively it helps in both the watery and the uh -huh. non-watery components of the human body, offering greater protection. Mm -hmm. Um, so liposome, because it's uh, based in kind of um, lipid form, yes. it reaches mm -hmm. the lipid parts. Exactly that. So the, phos the phosphatidylcholine, mm -hmm. so the lipid parts. Yeah, basically, it, basically you can get vitamin C in the tissues, which you through supplementation, which mm -hmm. was never really possible before. Mm -hmm. Which Incredible. is really encouraging. It's quite yeah. rare to have a fat soluble form of vitamin C, and that mm -hmm. offers more protection for the liver, mm -hmm. mention that, because that's a very fatty liver, and the brain, of course, which is a very fatty organ. So the fattiest oh. organs in the body, mm -hmm. I think, are the liver, Benefits the brain, and the adrenals. Incredible. And we know the adrenals is mm -hmm. actually what requires and, and burns up vitamin C if you're stressed big time, so it supports the adrenals too. Uh -huh. The bioflavonoids, and we come back to that, uh -huh. bioflavonoids is like a, I think it's been described like a turnkey. So you've got vitamin C and that'll work. So our powder vitamin C has a bioflavonoid. Bioflavonoid, the, yes, and the bioflavonoid, it's a good proportion. Sometimes mm -hmm. companies put a token amount in. Mm -hmm. This is a useful amount, so it's meaningful. And it's like a turnkey. It actually helps facilitate the vitamin C function in the body. Oh, so in terms of right so that much vitamin C with bioflavonoids, that much vitamin C without, without and you're taking this one. So the, again, the, the impact The details in the, in the devil. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there was in detail. Yes. Incredible. So, um, we have a, a bit of a worry with um, in Mongolia with the vitamin C about how it could because it's an acid form it could um, damage the stomach oh. or oh let me answer that one please <laughs> okay please do. so so pH so pH it'll be the same in, in, in Mongolian as it is English mm -hmm. so pH of one is a strong acid and the pH of fourteen is a very strong base or alkaline mm -hmm. did you know that even in a little baby the pH in the stomach should be pH of one. 
did you know? No. And the pH of one is vital uh -huh. to help to sterilize, to inhibit unwanted bacteria in the mm -hmm. first place, but also digest proteins and also liberate minerals for absorption. So if you're going to take, so with ascorbic acid, given that many, many people have low stomach acid, not too much, mm -hmm. by taking ascorbic acid with food, mm -hmm. you enhance your body's own production. Of course, the pH in, in the ascorbic acid is not one. No. It's going to be three three to four or mm -hmm. even five to six so, so it's not it's not hugely acidic but the acid actually supports your stomach production of stomach acid which is actually the, is the major first digestive juice which then stimulates the production of pancreatic enzymes and bile so in fact the most appropriate form of vitamin c to take with food is the ascorbic acid kind and so because the ph is much higher relatively speaking than the ph1 mm -hmm. forgive me there's 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 no way that that vitamin c would be negative it would only enhance the acidity um, and then it helps to liberate the absorption of minerals, including iron, for example. That's incredible because loads of people are worried. Interesting, the word worried. acid. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, right. um, there are some pre um, um, prediction or people are uh, assuming like uh, vitamin C during, people took loads of vitamin C during COVID and mm -hmm. it's uh, having a bit of gastritis effect on their oh. stomach or... Uh, yes, um, gastritis is infl inflammation of the stomach itself and, and I, I found that hard to appreciate having worked in the field for this long, 33 years of recommending vitamin C, ascorbic acid to, to clients amongst other forms. Um, however, vitamin C has a laxative effect. So if you take so much like magnesium, most forms of magnesium, not all forms, most forms, mm -hmm. if you take more of it, you'll have a laxative effect. So. I'm not sure it's a gastritis effect. Certainly, if you took a set of vitamin C, you'd have loose stools. Then you think, oh gosh, what have I done? Have I poisoned myself? It's a self-limiting yeah. um, toxicity. In fact, there is no toxicity of vitamin C except in the gut. So basically, they've taken too much, cut back. Yeah, That's how I That's know my vitamin C yes, level. Yes, you uh, optimal, my stools? optimal levels. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now, with liposomal C, you won't get that same impact. You won't get the laxative effect, and it reaches the part. So you, you can take a liposomal Amazing. form, and it gets the parts without having to take the amount that might lead to loose stools. But for many people who are constipated, mm -hmm. that level of vitamin C could be very useful because it helps to normalize their stool. But certainly, if they, again, I, I, I'm just going to question whether they had gastritis. They might have had loose stools yeah. for sure. I'm not, you can't deny their experience. Mm -hmm. um, but I suggest that was, that was meeting their threshold. Wow, so I was like always giving the like some vitamin C to my kids, yes. to younger ones. So, Thank goodness you know, for we that. could really yeah, benefit vitamin from C, it. If you think about the protection, imagine, I mean, it actually is, it's, it's actually emotionally be quite challenging to think of all these children coming up and actually we know that pollution affects the, the longevity of children what if they've been had their lungs damaged by, by the toxins over time. Yeah. If you can protect that every single day, and that's exactly where nutritional supplements, you know, you can't live in a gas mask, yeah. which actually has its own downsides, of course, um, but the, you're protecting the body from within. Mm -hmm. Vitamin C every day, zinc. So also with zinc, vitamins facilitate enzymes that help the body to function. Minerals actually have receptor sites um, and those receptor sites can be latched onto by toxins. So by having adequate mineral status in particular, you prevent toxins being uh, taken onto receptors within the body. So it's super important to have adequate minerals, particularly zinc, mm -hmm. but of course our whole host, magnesium, zinc, and having adequate iodine too. So that, that's where a multi-formula, yeah. coming onto that, would be very, would, would be very useful. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna eat my words, but it would be very useful, because you, you guarantee you cover your bases, yeah. so you've got the receptor sites full of the mineral, mm -hmm. and it's not open to be latched onto by a toxin. Incredible. So we could sit here and talk all day and obviously you're so passionate and so knowledgeable. I will have like thousand questions mm. easily for you, but uh, let's just try and wrap up and I'll have two mm. last questions. Um, so the second last one would be, uh, you pretty much just mentioned. So what would you recommend a general mm. uh, uh, average person to take daily in your, in your city, <laughs> in your city, it might be different. But uh -huh. I think that I think I've, you're right. I think I've, I've just justified it very nicely. Is that mm -hmm. is that we can't get what we need from food? You've got a, a great burden of toxicity, and you need protection now. What's it going to be? There's no drug in the world that could do that. Mm -hmm. It's only giving your body nourishment. So I think I think that the multi a multi a multi mineral mineral formula, um, and I do think extra vitamin C. If you're going to pin me down to three, I would say 
yeah, I mean, zinc, zinc, magnesium is so important too. So, uh, I know you're so passionate yeah. about well, magnesium. Well, 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 I mean, no, it's, it's so many functions, and because stress depletes magnesium, mm. and there's lack of magnesium, the relative lack of magnesium. So, but I would say that um, yeah, vitamin C, and actually, you know, bioflavonoid form is great, but maybe maybe one month of the bioflavonoid, one month of the liposomal. That's, that's so a rotate really good it. Point. So just rotate the vitamin C, so you're getting the benefits of that too. Quercetin, if there's an allergy disposition, mm -hmm. potentially. So we've got a sort of sport for choice, really, but, um, but protection from the young age, every single day protection for kids would be something I'd feel very strongly with. So, yes, I've got, I've got, I've got two step kids, so three step kids and two kids, so we've got five. <laughs> five, out, yeah. incredible. So there we go. Um, so many questions. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I just while you think of the question, I was going to say that... Um, one, one, like, um, uh, this is my analogy. So you can have this up, it looks the same, it may smell the same, mm -hmm. it may taste the same. Yeah. And you go on with that, and actually, but how do you know the difference? Yeah. And so this is a question that and I've, I've actually studied and looked at tens of different supplement brands, mm -hmm. literally. And you can look at the label, you can, well, I don't look at the, sometimes I can't tell from the supplement, you look at the label, look at the detail, and you can, you can tell, sometimes there are just a few people, they put in a, a zinc oxide, or they, or they, they put talc in as an excipient. So mm -hmm. there's some things you can tell. Um, and what we've done with, with, hopefully with Nutrigold, is provide the, the ideal nutrient in, in, with, with no fillers and binders that cause an allergy, or inhibit the absorption, and also in the most bioavailable form. So that, Imagine that lasts for eight hours, this lasts for half an hour. Mm -hmm. And this one is not eight times the price of that one. And you are involved in creating the Trigol supplements and coming up with the new product. Actually, yes. Manufacturing the, and development. Not the manufacturing and development. It's more the formulation. It's more the, the teaching. What's inside? Yeah, it's the, it's the teaching of the subject matter, as you know, from the webinars. And, yeah. and, and, and that's what I do. So it's really teaching. And actually, I, I, I am asked to have an input into the development of products, yes. Mm -hmm. And what goes into development of products? So oh, let's produce this. Yes, well, first of all, you want to have identify um, uh, uh, what you want it to achieve. So let's say we, let's take inflammation, which is such a common thing. So, so we need to show that the, the nutrients you were considering, and there are so many to consider, I mean, in terms of the plant world, there's 8,000 polyphenols, so there's a lot to choose from. So you, I get the evidence that in science that this nutrient has this effect. Then you say, well, after you've got the evidence of it being effective, let's just say turmeric, we then discovered that in nature, turmeric's really poorly absorbed. Mm -hmm. It's ten percent absorbed. So we mm -hmm. put it in supplements. Like you have to take, you have to take. It'll be a monster pill. Yeah. And, and then you will still, need, you still wouldn't have necessarily that great effect. Mm -hmm. And you might end up with tummy problems because you're taking too much. So then it's a question: of What's the most bioavailable form? Mm -hmm. And is the bioavailable form effectively without the excipients of binders that might inhibit it? effectively and then also what does it work in synergy or in additive so your additive effects mm -hmm. i.e you got one plus one equals two so we could put the turmeric with crocetin let's just say mm -hmm. in the supplement mm -hmm. so well, that would be quite useful but it's quite rare because you usually they give it's crocetin on its own it's turmeric on its own but it's, you can imagine this so you've got crocetin and turmeric mm -hmm. um, are, are they going to be compatible? Is there any, any um, antagonism between yes. the two things? Are they going to work together? Mm -hmm. And so what we would do at Nutrigold is not just have an additive effect, but a synergistic effect if we can, if it's possible. Mm -hmm. So a synergy where it's one plus one equals more than two. So if you took, so imagine you took, yes, you took those two supplements, mm -hmm. um, um, you want more of an, uh, more of an additive effect. But additive is useful too essentially, yes. because different antioxidants, different anti-inflammatory effects have different impact on different inflammatory cytokines. And so that's why turmeric has a broader array of activity than mm -hmm. quercetin, but quercetin is super useful for the histamine response, for example. Mm -hmm. so, so all these things to consider. Then it's a question of, um, of uh, availab availability of the nutrients, yes. um, then the manufacturing time, and then the minimum order. So there's an awful lot to consider on the operation side of the manufacturer, which I'm less involved in. So I'm more involved in the putting the, the, the nutrients together mm -hmm. in a format that uh, have best effect. The most important part. And then mm. we really appreciate that because um, customers have been asking for uh, certain types of probiotic a um, couple of years mm. back. And I put it through to Jeremy, our operations directions, like, oh, people are asking for this. and. Jeremy replied to me, it's like, oh, Anthony and Elizabeth won't even consider that because it's not fully researched yet. It's yeah. not fully. Um, so yeah. And it's um, a big, big, it big a wide of world of, mm. of uh, 20, 21,000 papers on probiotics. Mm -hmm. And you go Since through all of that and well, try to we, we <laughs> do, use the it. right search terms <laughs> and then we can find well, it. Definitely. Essentially, yeah. Thank you so very much. So last, very, very mm. last question. So um, 
So obviously you set up this company with Michael for uh, over 25 years yeah, ago. 25 I mean, years. And yeah. the people who work here joined experience in this field of over. <laughs> Yes, well, yes, we've had staff. The good news is, in a way, the staff have been with us for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the admin office staff, as as well as um, Karen's on the technical team um, as well, and Christine too. So I've I've known them for I've known them for twenty years, mm -hmm. in fact. Mm -hmm. So we've had the fortune of uh, becoming friends and colleagues, and then they're saying, look, we've got a role here. Yeah. Um, would you like to join us in that sense? So we've mm -hmm. got we've our technical team. I would say. I know the industry a bit. I'm familiar with competitor companies. So we have, mm -hmm. um, with Elizabeth, you're going to talk to in a minute. In terms of in terms of qualification and experience, um, I don't know of another team where, where we've got four, let's just say four, plus Mike's amazing knowledge. Yes, um, I was. I, mean, I, I don't know of any company that has five um, highly skilled experience. with different, different experiences. And Karen has her own naturopathic background. Mm -hmm. um, so does Elizabeth too. So it's, um, yeah, now I think about it. Um, there's, there's no team of five, of which I'm aware in any other company. They usually have one or two. And um, I'm just fantastic trying people, to, but, uh, yeah. but it's not all five. Mm. <laughs> it's incredible. Like I'm always blown away by the uh, technical teams, uh, information you guys putting out, and I've been to many of your trainings, and I'm just trying to like grasp a little bit of information and try and bring it to Mongolian audience. You are. In a, in a, in, in, and uh, I just sometimes uh, find it just kind of impossible. But the last question was um, so, where is this? What's the goal of our, mm. of our company now? Uh, what are we trying to, you say, yeah. the role in the health and industry field and um, for the people's. Um, you mentioned yes. optimum health yeah, journey. Yeah, I, I think optimum health. I think you've identified. It's a good question because I think there are many different um, answers to that, which are all yes. Yeah, so it's a long paragraph, possibly. Yeah. Because I think that the, I'll give you one. I think that the the ability to optimize individuals' health means that you can by optimizing health, you have a greater likelihood of having better relations with one person with another. So you enhance community. And if you enhance community, mm. you enhance society. If you enhance society, you have actually greater <laughs> sense of peace and harmony. Yes. So I firmly believe if you optimize nutrition, optimize health, that will include uh, mental health as well, and decision making, and neurotransmitter balance, and so on, you actually have a better community and a better planet. I, li I mean that completely. So, so I think helping on the micro level with, with, with the people I know and the clients that I've contacted, mm -hmm. that's the micro. And that, but if you imagine nourishing a mother mm -hmm. uh, better and the mother becomes more aware, makes better choices, that's going to benefit her whole family. And so one individual can then spread a family, then she refers somebody else and so on and so on, so it spreads out. So I think it's a, it's a global phenomenon. I think the more well-nourished people are, um, the better decisions are taken. And they're happier in the world. Yes. They're happier yeah. and healthier. Oh, I have I so, so many questions, but um, well, so it's a pleasure. <laughs> it really is a pleasure to see you, meet you, and thank you so much for, for talking you. with me. I hope that's thank been of you. some value to you. And even and after twenty-five customers. years, your mission and your yeah, it's, thank it's, you for it's all making the work a difference to the largest number of people yeah. in, the, in the in the most positive way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought about the mission statements a, a lot, and I really do mean that. I think it, it literally enhances community. Mm -hmm. and harmony and then leads to peace and I'm very much pro-peace.